Thank you, Tom. Shall we uh, turn to the Word of God? If you find your Bibles, and in the Bibles, the book of Ezekiel, uh, chapter 47, Ezekiel 47, which in the church Bibles should be page 881, 881, Ezekiel 47. This is a lovely uh, prophetic picture of the life of the Spirit, which is our theme this morning. Um, it captures a moment in time when uh, Judah has been uh, made a, a, um, a captive to an Assyrian uh, leader, and they're longing and yearning for uh, a return to life where it felt God was present and amongst them, uh, where there was a restoration of the land and a restoration of their hearts and souls. And in a moment of prayerfulness and, and imagination, Ezekiel the prophet has this lovely picture of uh, a river which emerges from the center of the temple in Jerusalem. And as it runs and flows under the walls of the temple, out into the, uh, the, um, the desert beyond, and then eventually down into the Dead Sea, the further it goes, the wider it becomes, the deeper it becomes, the more transformative it becomes. You'll see some of the language in this picture as we read it, which shows us actually of the sort of the renewing nature of this river. And this river is a picture of what it means to have life with the Spirit. So let's read this and then we'll reflect on its meaning and intent. So the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Then he brought me out through the north gate and led me round the outside to the outer gate facing east. And the water was trickling from the south side. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. And he asked me, son of man, do you see this? And then he led me back to the bank of the river. And when I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. And he said to me, the water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the Dead Sea. And when it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live there, will live wherever the river flows. There will be a large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to Englem. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shall we pray together? Keep the Bible open at that passage. Father, as we look at this word this morning, we pray you speak to us, encourage us, lead us deeper into the river, we pray. In your name, amen. Amen. Someone came to me a few weeks ago and said, are you a little bit concerned because we've got so many members of staff leaving all at, sorry, deserters leaving all at once? And, uh, and we said, no, not at all. Actually, we rejoice. We are thrilled. We are so happy. We're losing friends and we're sad for that. But there's been a dynamic to their moving and their leaving, which has been really helpful and which is a real testimony to them. When I looked at these staff who are lined up here this morning, um, Ash and Jenny, who's been an important part, Ash's wife, been an important part of who we are. I know that they've spent the last 
five months, four months, really prayerfully thinking about their future. When I think about um, Heidi, Heidi's been thinking and praying and listening to God for the last year. Where, Lord, do you want me next? Where, Lord? And in that, she had a sense of that it was time to move on, and she wanted to be really obedient to that, but in the last few weeks, the moving on to, the two has become apparent, and something has landed on her desk, which is really exciting for her. Tim, I, I jokingly say curates come and go, but they really do. But for, but for Tim, he's been such a valuable member of the staff team, but likewise, talking um, uh, Lou and I with Tim over the last year or so, really prayerfully thinking about we want to be where God wants us. We'll wait until that comes. We want to be in the right place at the right time for the right reason. I mean, fortunately, um, unfortunately for us, it was the very first job he went to offered him the role. But it is such an amazing fit for Tim. We can only rejoice and celebrate. And likewise for James, who runs um, at Croydon, um, amazing doors beginning to open for him, etc. So why am I saying this? We are so sad to be losing our friends, but we are rejoicing because it is in the Lord that they go. It is what, what we're seeing in their lives is, is the fruit of the Spirit. It is the fruit of a prayerful life. It is the fruit of a listening life. It is the fruit of a life that says, I just want to be where you want me to be, Lord. And in that, God has called them on to something else. It won't be better, because it can't be, <laughs> but moving on to something else. And we're happy. We're rejoicing, partly, as we applaud them out of the door. Because as the Lord calls on, he calls others in. And we've recently made an appointment and we've got another one in the pipeline and some others we're exploring where they won't be the same. It'll be different, but different is fruitful. Different is opportunity for growth and freshness and difference. And, and in that is life. And that's an amazing thing as well. And we're really confident that as God calls on, he will call others in. And that is good for us as a community. It keeps us stretching and growing. One of the lovely things about this passage here, life of the Spirit. What does it mean to live with the presence of God day by day? Most days I start my day uh, with a, a sort of, just a sort of quiet, reflective time. I like the house early in the mornings. I'm on my own. I can get up. Um, I can sort of wander around, make a coffee, have a think. And a little, just that, do you know, it's just that little moment of prayer before everyone else gets up. I say moment, it's normally a few hours before they emerge, but, but let's settle for a, a moment of prayer that just is that lovely place of breathing again with God, again with God. I uh, went to St. Stephen's, one of our churches in Putney this morning. I read them a poem. Um, I have the lovely opportunity of boring them with poetry most Sundays. I'm going to read it to you now. This is a poem by Philip Larkin. It's about fruitfulness. It's about a life with God. And uh, for them, it was a life of, do you know, we've been doing this for a very long time. What does it look and feel like to continue to be fruitful with God? So let me read this to you. Um, uh, it says this, Philip Larkin, The Trees. The trees are coming into leaf, like something almost being said. The recent buds relax and spread. Their greenness is a kind of grief. Is it they are born again and we grow old? No, they die too. Their yearly trick of looking new is written down in rings of grain. Yet still the unresting castles thresh in full-grown thickness every May. Last year is dead, they seem to say. Begin afresh, afresh, afresh. That is a lovely daily thought. Begin afresh, afresh, afresh. Every day, that new breath that says, Come, Lord. Yesterday was yesterday. It might have been glorious, it might not have been. 
we thank God for the dappled sun, dappled light, shade and sun as well. Larkin says, begin afresh. And that's what this reading in Ezekiel is saying to the people of God. Something else is coming, a freshness, a new time. And the, the descriptiveness of this river, did you notice something about it? Four times a measurement is taken as they walk out of the temple. You've got to leave the temple, go into the community. The river begins ankle deep. We think that it will be deepest in the temple. It's not. The, most, the place of most profound encounter with God is out there, if we can get that right. And so they begin ankle deep. And then as they walk a bit further, another thousand cubits, another measurement is taken and it's knee deep. And then eventually it's thigh deep. And then it's so deep it can only be swum in. And the the, the dreamer seer in the dream says to Ezekiel, son of man, do you see this? Do you see? Do you notice? It's almost a word that he would say to every one of us every day. Are, are you awake? Do we notice? Do you see what God is doing? And then the picture is an, amid, an image of um, community transformation and personal life transformation. And so along the the borders of the river, there are, it describes trees that grow, and the trees that grow and grow, and its leaves are used for healing. And it's an abundant river. It's got fish of every kind from the Mediterranean. I fished loads of kind times in the Mediterranean. There's not a single fish in that sea. But according to the miracle of God, there are fish of every kind, which is good for us. But then it has an, a surprising image where it says, where the river doesn't flow, where there's stagnancy, the swamps and marshes. And it describes, actually, in that moment, it's salt will be used. And salt is useful. But where there's no flow, eventually, salt, the fruitfulness, runs out. And that little place becomes a fruitless place. So this picture is encouraging the people to engage with the presence of God, the spirit of God, with freshness, afresh, afresh, every day. Every day, our days should begin with, come Lord Jesus, come. Life afresh in me this day. And then a listening. Do you know, when we talk about the spirit of God, we're talking about God, God Deuteronomy says, God is spirit. This is a complex thing. It's not for now. I won't get lost in it because the clock is ticking. But um, Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, it is all God. It is all one. I, the Lord, the Lord am one. So when we talk about spirit and Holy Spirit, we're talking about the presence of God. Begin afresh. Where the spirit doesn't flow, swamps and marshes. It's a creative presence. Actually, we've got a lovely story. We're going to do something this morning. I can just see Rich. Rich, run up to the front here with Ash. I don't know where Ash is. There is Ash. Very quickly, last summer, I preached on something, and something happened. Tell us, Ash. I'm just going to go up the mic. Yeah. Thanks. Um, come on up. What's going on? Sure, yeah. So, those who don't know, this is Rich Winter, by the way. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, well, so this is something that we haven't done, certainly in my time since being at St. Mike's, but um, in the last almost a year, um, Rich has basically written a worship song, um, which we're actually going to play a bit later on in the service. Um, but as Steve was speaking about the Holy Spirit and the Spirit moving in us and through us, actually, I think this is a really good example of that happening. So, Rich, do you want to just say maybe a little bit about where the song has come from and um, how it came to, came to be? Sure, sure. Um, well, it all started in Church in the Field last year, and during the service, the staff gave everyone a blessing, which was uh, an excerpt from the Bible, short excerpt in an envelope, and we all had a moment where we opened them and had a look at what was inside. Um, they were all great. Um, the one that I received was Isaiah 43 2, um, which reads as follows, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, and the flames will not set you ablaze. So those words just sort of stuck with me, and still do, and eventually they sort of found their way into a song. Um, 
And, you know, I guess I just wanted to try and find a way of sharing those words more widely with others. And the amazing thing is that was actually what the, um, the idea was. I don't know who was there on that, uh, this service on the field, but it was Steve preaching. And he gave out these paper envelopes, didn't he, with, with a verse in. And you said, bless someone with that verse. I think Steve was thinking maybe text it to someone who you thought might need to hear what it said. And I love that actually over, over carefully praying and thinking about it for nine months, Rich has got a worship song together where he can bless not one person, but many people with that. And that has come in, in my eyes solely through the Holy Spirit working through Rich. So um, later on, we'll, we'll sing this song. And the words will be on the screen, but it's always difficult when you don't know a song. So don't worry if you can't sing along. Just listen and let those words speak to you. And uh, yeah, we'll do that a bit later on in the service. Thank you, Rich. Thank you, Ash. I love that. Just resonates with that line again. Son of man, do you see this? Do you sense what is happening? And in Rich's life, it sort of found its way into the writing of a song. Now, please don't feel you have to write a song every time I preach. Um, that would be a bit much. Um, but if you want to give it a go, please do. Um, uh, yeah, we all have different ways of being. Um, I love reading. I love being reflective. Others are not reflective. That's okay. God will find a way of creativity through you. Your gifts will be distinctive to who you are. But the crucial thing is this. The river of the Spirit, the life of the Spirit, is what brings alive this journey with God. It brings a dynamism to it. We can have all the theory we like about God exists or doesn't, wherever you are in your, your journey of discovering faith and working things out. But actually, if we want that um, experiential, knowing, uh, creative, engaging, vibrancy that moves beyond theoretical, then it comes down to this breath each day that says, come, Lord Jesus, come, Father God, come, Holy Spirit, your life within me. And with that, the gift is given of the Spirit of God. I'm going to read to you a little bit from John Stott. I was reminded of this again this morning. There's a bit in the book of Ephesians, and then we're going to pray together, um, where uh, Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus and he's talking about um, sort of lifestyles and he's saying, do you know, it's, it's a struggle with this and it's a struggle with that. Um, stop doing it. Try your best. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And the language of be filled, the Greek, is really interesting. It begins in what's called, a, a, it's written one word, but it's written in various tenses. So this one is as a command. So in, it, in that is a sense of urgency. Paul is saying, be filled. Be filled. This is important. This is a part of who we are. Um, it, it, it's, um, it's not an authoritative be filled. It's an urging be filled. And then it's written in the passive voice, which is allow the spirit to fill you. So it's not something we force, but we put ourselves and position ourselves our hearts, our willingness, our openness to say, I'm allowing this to happen. It's written in the present tense. And in that sense, it says, let's do it right now. In this moment, let's do it right now. But it's not as a one-off single moment. It's written as a continuous again and again and again. So Paul is saying to the church in Ephesus, this is a good thing. Be filled. Breathe. Invite say yes i urge you to do it it's an important thing let's do it right now but let's also make this a pattern of life again and again and again and that is why when it comes to staff leaving we're able to applaud them out of the door as our friends who we will miss there will be tears and there will be ice cream as well but there will be tears but we're able to applaud because we know they're doing it in step with the Spirit of God. And that's an amazing thing. Why don't we stand together, friends? We are going to pray. I'm going to get Lou to come up and join us. And, and maybe Tim as well, if he's able to be released from the desk at the back. They're going to grab the oil. And uh, uh, what we would love to do is to pray for you and pray over you. You don't have to come up to the front. Um, that isn't a necessarily a magic thing that makes all the difference. Wherever you are, um, why don't you just hold out your hands um, and in your way, in your language, with your personality, your style, your character, just say, come Lord Jesus, come. 
But if you would like to come forward, then um, these priests in the Anglican Church would love just to anoint you with oil and pray that blessing over you and say, we, we want to do this with you. We want to say a big amen to your prayer of come, Lord Jesus, come. And they will anoint you with oil. It's a very biblical thing. Um, but it's an important thing. And you take away that with you into the day before you say again tomorrow morning, the same again, Lord, afresh, afresh, afresh. While we do that, fruit of the Spirit, Rich is going to sing his song to us that came from that moment. Um, uh, I'm going to stop speaking. Come to the front, guys. Come up to see Tim and Lou if you'd like to be anointed with oil. Uh, but let's use this time to invite God's presence amongst us. Come, Lord Jesus, come, we pray. Send your spirit, your presence, river of life, that we may be made afresh, afresh, afresh in your name. And so we wait and we listen and be attentive to what the spirit brings to us.